section 2.3 and we're looking at conditional probability again but we're looking at conditional probability on a Venn diagram. So what happens then when we're looking to um, represent things like, like if, you, if you're watching through the playlist you've, you've seen these sort of notations um, from the last video but if, if I have uh, two events on a Venn diagram and I'm looking to represent something like this probability of A given B. What happens if I'm trying to draw that on the Venn diagram? Okay, well given B is actually restricting us. I'm telling you that I'm not looking at the whole Venn diagram anymore. I'm telling you that I'm, I have to be within this circle here. Okay, so if I look at something like um, example 5 find the probability of A given B. Well, if I look at the example uh, the 5 Venn diagram, 0.15 is that probability there, 0.25 is that probability there. We know that the area of the whole Venn diagram has to be, add up to 1, right? The whole thing is all the possible outcomes of my experiment. So these numbers here add up to 1. But I'm telling you that I'm in this circle, okay? The probability of being in the circle doesn't have to be 1. So that's the first thing. The probability of being in the circle doesn't have to be 1. The probability of A, given that this has happened, so event B has happened, what's the probability that event A happened as well? Well, I'm hoping you can see that's the same as saying, what's the probability of this being in this area, given that I'm in this circle? So that is 0.15 out of the total um, area of this of this set, okay? So um, that's what we got there, that's where those numbers come from, and it, you can see the can that cancels down to 3 out of 8. It doesn't matter if you've got decimals or fractions, it's the same kind of calculation in there, okay? So the same thing, probability of, in this case they're asking for B, given we're in A union B. So I'm telling you that this event has happened. I'm within this union bit here. And what's the probability we're in B? Well, the probability of, of being in set B is 0.15 plus 0.25. So it's that, those two areas there, out of the probability of being in this set at all, which is 0.4 for this bit, plus 0.15 plus 0.25 for this bit and this bit, okay? So that's how we think of it on a Venn diagram. And I can see why they've done this, but in, in the textbook, uh, to me, this is sort of uh, jiggled around a little bit. We're, we're expecting to use that sort of idea. I'm telling you which part of the Venn diagram I'm in, and then taking you know, the, this bit divided by this whole bit, or uh, whatever we just did, you know, th this bit divided by this whole bit. Now, if we think about that, on a Venn diagram with just A's and B's in it, we're going to end up with this formula, which is in the next section. And I can see why they put it in the next section, because here they're slowly trying to get us used to conditional probability one stage at a time, and we're getting that sort of intuitive feel for this section divided by this section. But over here, in section 2.4, they're introducing probability formulae. And the formulae, you should have an intuitive understanding of them, but also we can just apply them as formulae sometimes. Um, so... I can see why they've separated it, but I think really we need to say this in the same discussion of, you know, I'm, what I mean is I'm going to say it in the same video. Here we have two events. We've got event A and we've got event B in a Venn diagram. The probability that B happens given that A has happened. Well, that's the same as saying, what's the probability? Well, A has happened, so I'm in this circle. What's the probability that B's happened as well? That's What's the probability that I'm in this sort of the bit that I'm dotting? It was the probability of being the dotted bit, given that I'm within the circle of A. So that is the probability of A intersection B divided by the probability of A. Now, if that statement there is a surprise to you at this point in the video, you must go back to the start of the chapter, understand the uh, set notation. The, the, uh, there's videos on this channel in the same playlist. Just, you know, go, go back a couple of videos. Uh, understand the set notation. Once you've understood the set notation, then get the idea of B given A from the first part of this video, and then 
hopefully this statement is not a surprise at all. Okay, So the probability of b given a is probability of a intersection b divided by the probability of a. So we need to know where that formula comes from, and once we know where it comes from, now we can start applying it, and often it's rewritten in the form they've given us here. Okay, So the probability of a intersection b is the probability of b given a times the probability of a. And you'll find that what happens in the questions is you draw a Venn diagram, you try to fill in all the sections. Uh, if you think back to year 12 Venn diagrams and probability, you fill in the most overlapping section first and work your way outwards. And sometimes you'll find a section that you can't fill in, but the question's given you enough information to use this formula, and that will help you. Or maybe um, you don't need the Venn diagram at all and you can get to the answer that you need using this formula and then later on in the question you draw the Venn diagram, we'll see. It's a, it's a mixture of Venn diagrams and formulae that will work together for us. Um, so, we've got one formula there, uh, which they're calling the multiplication formula uh, for conditional probability. We can see it as a multiplication or we can see it as a division. Personally, I always remember that one because I can always picture this diagram and write that formula down. And then if I need to, I can rearrange into this form. If I'm honest, that is a very useful form to have memorized, but I can't, in my head, I don't understand why probability of A intersection B is this. I don't understand that as easily as I understand this. I know the probability of B given A is this area divided by this area, because I, I picture this as that bit, and I picture that as that bit. So this one really I can pull out of my head just by picturing a diagram. This one I have to think a little bit more, um, but it's a useful formula. If you are good at memorizing formulae, this is the, the, the most, most useful form to memorize. Um, and since we've strayed into section 2.4, let's carry on and finish it off. Um, we've got this formula here. Um, so the way that we should think of this is you've got one formula for A into section B, and you've got one formula for um, A union B, okay? So the A union B formula goes like this. Here's A, here's B. Well, A union B sort of means either A, so the probability of A happening, or the probability of B happening. And we were always taught at GCSE, you know, an, an or in probability is an, is an add, isn't it? So this is what we'd expect. The problem is, what about this overlap? I mean, I've done, I've counted A, so I've counted everything here, and then I've counted B, so I've counted everything here and everything here, so I've counted the overlap twice, I've counted the intersection twice. So I need to take away the probability of A intersection B. Okay? And what we sort of for, forgot to mention earlier on when we when if you ever had a, a teacher who said probability of a intersection b uh, sorry the, the the probability of a or b is the probability of a plus the probability of b that was true for the sort of events you were studying at that point because the events you were studying would have been ones with no overlap so pro, set a here and set b here if a happened b couldn't happen Okay, um, and those events are called mutually exclusive. So if you have mutually exclusive events, the probability of A union B, um, sorry, yeah, the probability of A union B is the probability of A plus the probability of B. So if I'm in A or I'm in B, I'm either in here or I'm in here, but I can't be in the overlap. Uh, and that comes out in the formula because there's no intersection part there. So if I've got mutually exclusive events, I have, um, an or meaning an add, which is what we um, already knew. We know this, that's, that's a fact that we've used before. We also have independent events, and this is a fact that they are very keen on testing um, in the uh, AS papers particularly. I've seen it on some of the A-level papers. Uh, when I say that, I'm mainly looking at the pre-release materials. Uh, again, I'm filming this in 2019. There's only been one full A-level sitting uh, and I think there have been two AS level sittings, not sure. We don't have many official past papers, but in all the practice materials, we've seen this question quite a bit, that they're asking you about independent events, um, and you should be prepared to say for independent events, the probability of A and B happening is the probability of A times the probability of B. Okay, and again, that's a, a fact that we've seen before, right? If you've got and in probability, it's a times, and 
um, f how do independent events show themselves? Well, if we know that events are independent, then we've got the fact, um, let me just write this formula down here, A intersection B, I know that for any event, whether they're independent or not, this fact is true. Okay, this fact here is true. For independent events, this tr fact here is true. But what do we know about independent events? We know that probability of B given A is the same as the probability of B. Okay, so this fact just comes from this formula and the fact that those two things are equal if we have independent events. The last thing to say, um, or just remind us of really, I think this is, if I'm honest, I don't have my year 12 textbook on me and I can't remember exactly what's in that chapter, but just very quickly, mutually exclusive events, the two circles in the Venn diagram do not overlap. Very easy to represent. Independent events are not easy to picture on a Venn diagram, okay? Um, independent events, mean probability of A intersection B equals the probability of A times the probability of B. Well, how do we picture that, you know? How, how, how am I supposed to picture that on a Venn diagram? Um, you could think about it like this, the probability of B given A, if the events are independent, is the same as the probability of B. And then I'll use this version of the formula. So the probability of B equals the probability of A intersection B divided by the probability of A. So what would that look like on a Venn diagram? Well, that would mean this. Probability of A intersection B divided by probability of A. So that would be this area divided by this area. Okay? So the ratio between that area and that area has to be the same as whatever probability is in this circle here. Okay? So if we drew a Venn diagram where the areas are actually proportionally the same, you know, the, the, if, if that is an area of 0.3, three there and that is an area of 0 0.1 you know if this bit here was three times bigger than this bit here if we made the made it a sort of two scale venn diagram if you like then um then that then it, that's what we'd see right we'd see that the the ratio between that area and this area is the same as the ratio between this area and the whole space so you can see that you know even if we did that with a proportional you know an area venn diagram this isn't easy to see on a Venn diagram. So mutually exclusive events, easy to say. Independent events, easy to describe with formulas. Not really possible to, to see that on a Venn diagram quickly. You have to do the calculations with the formulas. Um, very last thing, I think this is the, se the second last thing, isn't it? I said just a couple of minutes ago that the preparation, you know, the practice material questions are very keen on asking us about independent events and We've seen a variety, the class that I'm teaching at the moment in year 13, preparing for their uh, A2 exams and, and doing their past papers, have seen some questions where they expect you to kind of give an in-context answer as to, you know, so these event, events are independent because one doesn't affect the other because when I roll the dice, it doesn't matter what I get, you know, what I've got on the coin first, right? So, so give a, a, a descriptive sentence answer. And they've seen more questions, I think, where they want you to quote the formula. Two events being independent means that probability of A in section B equals probability of A times probability of B. And then work out this number, work out this number and this number and show that they're independent that way. My advice would be if you're in the exam, be aware that you can answer it sort of an in-context written in sentences answer and you can answer those questions with a formula and with some calculations. Do both, okay? It doesn't take very long to write the sentence. It doesn't take very long to do the calculations. Make sure you've done both uh, if you see that on an A-level paper. And that takes us right the way to the end of section 2.4. Brilliant. Um, we have just tree diagrams together.